Now tell me this: Were you there during the rainy season or not? In Kinshasa, it was not raining, but it, in the well, once I got into the rainforest, it was raining. Yes, so yes, it was the rainy season. Okay. But the Congo is so large that if you go online, you'll see that the rainy season varies according to the province you're in because it's just that big. But definitely, once I got into the rainforest, it was raining all the time. So I would imagine it was the rainy season. Yeah. One one of the most brilliant things that you did by far is the fact that you would record certain officials. Or, or, or priests, anybody of authority, you would do a voice recording, and uh, and they would speak in the local language Lingala, yeah. and then when you got yourself into trouble or not, or at least into a difficult situation, somebody who's really trying to stop your voyage or demanding bribes, you would just play back that thing, which basically said, "Hey, this is my good friend. Treat him nicely. Don't be an asshole to him. Let him through." He's on his mission to go to Uganda and leave him alone, basically, is what they said. Exactly. That was utterly brilliant. Now, do you think it would have been even more powerful had you done it as a video? Yes, maybe. But because uh, it's hard to get electricity in the jungle and charge your phone, I didn't want to like waste too much battery playing videos all the time. So if it's a voice recording, it's it's hard, less hard on the battery of your phone. So it's, it's less uh, energy consuming. But definitely, yes, if I had a a solar panel with me a portable solar panel and if i had access to electricity 24 7 i think that a video indeed is even more powerful but honestly with the recording it was it was still pretty pretty good and by the way i got that trick from afghanistan i, I think you remember from the podcast um and in afghanistan i would do that a lot i would have like a recording of somebody speaking to me in pashto and if the taliban arrested me i would play the recording to ease the tension and build report so i just use the same trick because pe when people hear Someone speaking in their local language from their neck of the woods, talking to about you in good terms. It immediately just changes the mood completely. It, it is because you, because it shows that you've been pre pre selected vetted. and vetted exactly. Yes. Now that's amazing, and that's a really good strategy. A great tip for anybody who's listening to this, going to any place that's kind of a bit uh, where there's a, a bunch of checkpoints, and that's a lot of Africa has a ton of checkpoints and people who are really trying to be extractive. You know, extracting. Uh, things from you and that kind of stuff. Now, what about why couldn't you have gone to the Ministry of Tourism maybe and gotten some official letter? I realize some people are illiterate, but could that have maybe say, hey, look at this, a nice, beautiful stamp from the Ministry of Tourism of the DRC allowing me to tra traverse the whole country without problem. Could you have done that or did you think about that? Did you try? What's the story? Hmm. I, I, I could have done it, but I, I felt like, like you said, first of all, a lot of them can't even read uh, in the jungle. So the effectiveness would have been 50-50. And the, the Ministry of Tourism, knowing how corrupt the DRC is, probably would have asked me a lot of money for that letter, unfortunately. Unlike in Afghanistan, where they provided it for free, which was nice. Uh, but I, I thought it was it was going to be a lot of hassle, a lot of money taken from me just to get that letter. And there's just something about hearing someone's voice. Because, you know, if it's the letter, they could always sometimes BS and say, hey, you forged it, it's fake. Because they did that with my passport. Sometimes they would say that my passport was a fake document. You know when they're trying to get money out of you but if you play the recording the cool thing is even the people around like if there are some locals because even if the cop is talking to you in his office the locals will hear something that's going on and they'll come and like listen to what's happening so when you play the recording the guy you're talking to hears it but everybody around as well hears it so now they're on your side too whereas if it's a letter if they cannot read you lose them and then the one guy that can read he's got all the power and he can just play dumb and pretend that the, the letter is fake or that it's not what it's supposed to be. So the recording wins you over the villagers that cannot read. It reaches more people at, at, um, at the same time. And also, if it rains so much that the letter might get destroyed, you might lose it. Whereas my phone, uh, it's always with me. So the risk is lower to lose it. Okay, good point. But by the way, just to defend the poor people at the DRC and the Ministry of Tourism, I did go there and I got a letter from really? them because originally I was going to be driving all the way to Lumbumbashi, which is the southern part of the DRC. And I was going to drive there from Kinshasa and they authorized that and they gave me a letter saying, here, show this to any checkpoint. So and they didn't ask for any money. So wow. I could have been lucky. Um, but I think anybody listening to this, if you're thinking about doing a trip to the DRC, more is better. Just try. The worst thing that can happen is say no, but use a combination of strategies. So you got the letter for the people who like to read and they like to see stamps. You've got the audio recording. If you've got low battery, you've got a video recording. If you've got good battery, you know, you just have many things to, in order to go through all these checkpoints because, yeah. you know, 
it's exhausting. I mean, whenever yeah. I think of the DRC, I just get exhausted. When I read yeah. your report, your whole uh, blog, I was just spent and just, you know, I just, I know how it is. And because I drove oh, yeah. across from Uganda, I drove to uh, Bangui, the Bangui. capital of, uh, of the Central African Republic, which is not as much by half the distance yeah. of what you did. And it's just one big headache. It's really tiring. Yeah. And people wonder, like, why do you do this? Well, I mean... Why did uh, Morton Stanley do walk across the DRC? I mean, it's just for adventure. I mean, it's for fun. It's for discovery. Yeah. And it's for, yeah. you know, when you, when you and I are old and dead, uh, or nearly dead, should I say, you know, this is the kind of the memories that we're going to think about. Um, Absolutely. But you're right that people that haven't done that, sometimes it's hard for them to understand just how tiring it is. And like you said, you read my blog, and you've been there, you've gone through the motions, so you can imagine yourself, oh, yeah, I was dealing with that official and he took three hours of my time harassing me. Like, it's hard for people to conceptualize it until they actually face the fear of being in a foreign country and being somewhere with a guy that's trying to coerce you and get money out of you. And yeah, it's just... But initially, you're scared. And in fact, I, I was quite scared before going. And I think we had a call because I was like, what strategy am I going to use? <laughs> you know, I had a fake UN card in case... Because uh, Mike did that when he went there in 2012. He had a fake UN card and he would pretend to be a UN inspector. So I had my fake UN card with my picture. But then right at the same time, there was a massive riot against the UN in, uh, in Goma. And everybody in the DRC hated uh, the UN at that point. So I thought, oh, I cannot use that. I cannot use that strategy anymore. If I pretend to be a UN inspector, it might actually make it worse for me. So, yeah. But one thing I'll say is if people do such a trip, yes, a letter is good. Yes, an audio recording is good. Yes, a video recording is great. But ultimately, all these tools are just tools. But what you really need, first and foremost, is people skills, knowing how to read who you're talking to, knowing how to be assertive when you have to and back down when you have to. Because even without these tools, you can still pull it off. But it's all here. It's, it's, it's just everything is, is about your mental fortitude. That's what it is. And that ends this episode of the Wander Learn podcast, where we explore travel, technology, and transformation. If you'd like to see the show notes with links to what we've talked about, go to wanderlearn.com and click on this episode. If you'd like to connect with me, just remember F Tapon. That's my first initial and my last name. F Tapon is always my social media username. My website is ftapon.com. Do you want to leave me an anonymous voicemail where you can make a comment or ask a question? Then go to speakpipe.com slash ftapon. Furthermore, if you'd like to get rewarded for supporting my projects, then go to patreon.com slash ftapon. That's where you can pick up some remarkable rewards for as little as $2 a month. Now, five quick favors. Number one, subscribe to the Wander Learn podcast. Two, download it. Three, share it. Four, review it. And five, sign up for my newsletter at wanderlearn.com. Our theme music was composed by Eric Stratman. This is Francis Tapon encouraging you to wander and learn. <laughs>